Okay. Uh, this morning, we're going to spend some time uh, talking about pattern modeling. And we're going to uh, uh, show you that uh, pattern modeling isn't for some kind of special artist person or somebody who's super creative or has some kind of special talent. It's, it's actually very simple to do some pretty elaborate things. So I'm going to kind of walk through some processes. Uh, and I'm using this trunk here. Did everybody see my trunk? Awesome. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, to start a project like this, the first thing that I do is I build myself a pattern set. And I design all the patterns for it up front. So I know kind of what I want, uh, at least style-wise. And I go and I seek out um, some patterns. <laughs> and figure out what it is that I want to make. And I use different resources for that. Um, there's some really good stuff online, but I also have some catalogs that are really useful for figuring out what kind of patterns I want for the projects I'm going to do. This one here is uh, Ornaments, uh, a company called Ornamental Supply out of Chicago, one of the oldest remaining uh, uh, carving companies out there that make applications and things that they uh, that they sell. Most likely, if you've seen an application somewhere, it came from these guys. I'll pass these around. This one here is just a printer's ornament stuff. So these kinds of books you guys can find anywhere, uh, Arbor Lobby and stuff like that. I'll, I'll pass these around just so you guys can look at them. Uh, they're, they're great resources just for getting ideas. And so I like to uh, flip through those books, come up with some pattern ideas before I ever get started. And then from there, we start making patterns. So let's start a new project. So when I'm pattern modeling, pattern modeling <clears throat> is a little bit different than when you're designing a project. So when I'm creating a new project to design a pattern, I'm not worried about what board size I'm going to be carving because I'm not going to carve this. I'm going to make the pattern then I'm going to save it to my library so that when I actually make my board that I'm going to carve on, then I'll pull that pattern up. So this is just a workspace. So I usually make it square and I usually make it as big as I can uh, within reason. So somewhere around 12 inches or 14 inches square. Well, depending on your pattern, you might need to go longer, depending on what it is. But most of these patterns that I'm going to be demonstrating here are pretty compact. All right, I've got my board here, and I always turn off my texture. Everything I do, I don't want to see the wood grain on there. It's distracting me from seeing what I'm actually working on. And uh, it's not, not allowing me to fully uh, be able to use that space. So I will always turn that, that texture off. And the second thing that I do is I turn perspective view off. That's under the view menu there. And the reason I'm doing that is especially when you are designing patterns. Right now, uh, everything on the screen is at a perspective view so you know I tilt this the back side of the board it's actually from visually it it looks right because it but it's a little bit skinnier so with perspective view off it's actually going to be flat so there's not going to be any skewing of what I'm doing based on the depth of, or the the width of it so all right, let's get started with our pattern then. Uh, the other thing that, that you want to do is create a floor depth for modeling patterns. So I'll just draw a rectangle and fill the entire space and set it to a carved depth. And I usually work at a half an inch for modeling patterns. So I'm making my patterns deep and big so I might end up only carving it, you know, an inch and a half 
inch wide, but when I model it out, I want to get as much detail as I can. So I'm going to design it, you know, 10 inches here. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's make a, our first pattern here. And on the trunk up here, uh, one of the patterns that is used quite a bit is this little flower rosette and it's you you'll see it repeated several places on there <clears throat> but anytime you're doing a pattern set for any project you're going to need center elements so center elements are a good place to start and rosettes are easy and they're nice and who doesn't like a nice rosette so I'm using the pattern modeling tools here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, define this as a revolve, this circle. And I'm going to draw a shape in here. This is the what we call the profile drawing window. So this circle up here I'm going to draw a profile shape that's going to get revolved around there. So what I mean by profile is, if, you know, you take a piece of trim and you look at the edge and you can see the, the curves to it. That's the profile of, of that trim. So I can draw profiles like that in this profile window and extrude them or revolve them. Is this a 2D pattern? No, this is all 3D. This is 3D. Okay. Yeah, this is all the, the 3D package. So the dotted line on the left hand side is the center? No, the dotted line on the left hand side, yes, is the center. The yellow the dotted line on the right hand side is the outside. Is the outside. And they're and you'll the, they're color coordinated. So this one's white and the white of the line here. This one's yellow for the center dot there. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to draw a quick profile here and this tool that I'm using right here is part of the 2d drawing suite it's just a drawing tool uh, it, we call it smart spline because it allows for very quick uh, drawing and changing between <coughs> drawing modes So just a quick and simple profile there. And what I'm doing here, let me kind of explain, because we can see what this is going to look like before I even click OK. So we know that this yellow is the center of the circle, right? And then this side is the white. So that means that this profile shape is going to start from there and then end where the white's ending over here and it's going to get rotated around so what shape do we do you expect this to kind of look like what what's going to be in the middle of it based on this dome. a dome excellent you guys get it okay so there are going to be like a dome shape there so let's click ok let's see it all right so we got our little dome and a kind of a bump and then a it uh, kind of sweeps out to there to the edge. Excellent. Okay, so already we've we've got a pretty good center element that you know we could use for door jams or all kinds of different things if we wanted to, uh, without adding other any other elements. But let's go ahead and do some more. All right. Uh, this tool that I, I keep clicking on, this is called the square board. It's just it's a really useful tool, especially when you're doing pattern modeling. It just straightens your board out for you. Uh, I keep clicking it, and people get after me for not telling them what buttons I'm clicking. So, all right, let's go just to our arc tool, our arc drawing tool, and I'm going to turn snap to grid on even though I can't see the grid I just want it these elements to snap so I can get them lined up easy alright so I'm gonna put an arc there 
and then I'm going to put another arc here so I kind of end up with a circle but I'm going to bring these in nice and symmetrical <clears throat> okay with this element uh, we're going to use our puffing tool if we could close it all right that's uh that's a good illustration there. <clears throat> Alright, so a closed shape will be necessary to create any kind of region or use any of these tools, right? And a closed region is defined by it not having any breaks in it. So my tools weren't available, they're grayed out up here on the on my toolbar. And so I know <clears throat> this has got to be because my tool is not or my shape is not closed. So I know a lot of people encounter this, especially in the in the beginning when they're new customers. They're like, well, why is my toolbar grayed out? Well, go and check your shape and just pull away one of the edges to see if, if it's actually not all the way together. And then you can just drag that point and you'll see those little red crosshairs and snap it together so that you've got a closed shape and then all your tools become available. All right. So I'm going to click on my puffing tool, <clears throat> and the puffing tool actually puffs things. It, it's it's very descriptive of what it does, but you can puff things in different shapes, basically. So I can use a curve or a bevel or a flat or a bubble, and they've got these nice icons there that illustrate kind of what it, that that's going to look like. But it's just fun to play around with it, too, so don't be afraid to just play around with your tool sets just to see what they all do. So I'm going to use a curve puff on this at, at 0.5 depth there and I'm going to click OK. Alright so that gives me this neat little shape there. <clears throat> but I actually am going to want to do uh, something a little different with it. I'm going to take that and I'm going to invert it. And you can find invert in your carving menu. An invert just going to turn it inside out flip it around <clears throat> so then you end up with this really nice leaf element now I'm, I've got things intersecting things in, in ways that aren't exactly the, what we want but I'm going to uh, I'm going to clean all that up in a little bit and we're going to push and pull with our depths and heights to get everything lined up Where's my, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so on this, we're going to need to revolve this element here all the way around this because we're going to make kind of a flower, right? And how, how would we go about doing that? Does anybody have any idea how to do that? The sweep. Well, to sweep this this flower petal that we just made here, we won't we won't be able to sweep that. <clears throat> well, and this is tricky because a, a a lot of people have struggled with this because I can't rotate this. So I just drew this shape, I puffed it, but I can't rotate it. So what do you, what can you do? Make it a pattern. Make it a pattern. Absolutely. And the make pattern button is is absolutely wonderful tool because I can design any little element like this and I take it and I just select that individual piece in my carving list over here and I selected group and put it in a folder there <coughs> and then I can select just the, the group folder and then I go up here to make pattern and I click on that and I can go to my favorites. So Joe, does it have to be in a group to make a pattern or could you just 
No, yeah, it has to be in a group. So even if it's just an individual piece, it's not multiple so elements. A group of lines, but it still has to be in a group. Yeah, it still has to be in that folder for it to be able to make it into a pattern. All right, so we'll, we'll just call this um, leaf one or petal, whatever we want to call it. We can, that's fine. Okay, so we've made our pattern. Let's open up our pattern list, and there it is. Our little petal it looks exactly like the one that we modeled originally so we can actually get rid of that one that we originally made we don't need it anymore this one we can put into place let me put it here and we mirror it over there I'm gonna copy and paste it Excuse me. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Center it this way. Then I can mirror this one. And so on and so forth here. We're going to make our all of our elements. We'll mirror that one four ways. <clears throat> so very quickly, by making one little pattern there and uh, one revolve, we've, we're pretty close to uh, our little flower rosette there. Does everybody feel confident and comfortable that they could they could do this. Yeah, uh huh. Okay. Uh, so I, I had this one element here in this corner that I had copied and rotated, uh -huh. and then I just had it selected and and hit mirror all. So those other ones there <clears throat> are following it. They are the child of this one. No, it, it creates all of those automatically uh, when when I do that mirror, which is why that, that mirror is really wonderfully useful. Okay, all right. So we've got these uh, pedal elements, and they're obviously things proportionally aren't going to work here. We need to play with our depths and things, but at least we've got some good shapes to play with. Um, but one of the things, when we created that first revolve there, we created that kind of bump and sweep down. We, we did that for a reason, because we want the overall shape of this to kind of have that nice curvy feel to it. And we're going to do that by selecting that that circle element that we first created and we can do this over here in our carving list and that we've got our merge styles and I don't know if, if Connie talked about merging at all yesterday <clears throat> well merging is a really really useful and very fun tool where I can take this circle element here and I can give it an additive merge and I can apply it to whatever is sitting on top of it. And now these petals, you'll see, they have that same curve that we swept there in the beginning. So rather than them being just these flat, straight, kind of funny looking shapes, now they've actually got some character to them where it's actually starting to look like something you'd you'd find on a piece of furniture. And that merge feature is, is a basic <clears throat> basic function, yeah. All right. Let's play with our depths a little bit here.
All right. <clears throat> One thing Dave in his presentation yesterday was was uh, showing you guys grouping uh, and to keep all your files organized, right? Uh, we're gonna do that as well here. So I'm gonna keep my leaf elements isolated together. And I may want to make them into a pattern later or, or not, but at least now I've got them I've got them nice and organized so I can find everything good. My circles and rectangles. Now another thing, a reason for this is uh, the way that merging works is that you can isolate merges within groups. So you can actually get really complicated with your merging if you want to. So I want that merge to add those leaf elements in, but I don't want it to interfere with that rectangle that we, we put on the back of the board here. So by moving that circle inside that group there, and this rectangle is on the outside of that group, that means that that merge effect is not going to affect anything outside of the folder. So you can get pretty complex with embedding things into folders, merging this element to that, but then hiding it in a folder so it doesn't affect anything else around it there. And we're going to we're going to do a little bit more of that uh, in some of the more complex patterns that we're going to be doing this morning as well. So let's keep let's keep tweaking this. Obviously, we've got some depth issues we need to work on and height issues. Maybe open up that sweep, look at where we're at, and we can use our constraint tools in here as well. So I can go and I can look at how deep am I at certain elements. And that's at 0 0.44. That's probably deeper than we want. Let's change it to 0 0.3 for that element. And just tweak and adjust all your curves. And pattern modeling, like uh, like a lot of things with this, is a lot of back and forth. Like adjust this, look at it, adjust that, look at it, until you've got it the way that you want it to be. So I want to try to get those leaves to just sit on top there and have a nice following that curve without being too large, too obnoxious. So what I'm doing is I'm playing around with my depths and heights here. So I've pushed that depth, uh, or I brought it from 0.5 because we were starting with everything being you know half an inch deep. I brought it up to be uh, 0.3 inches and lowered my height down to 40. And, and you guys understand height and depth from the explanations yesterday, right? Go ahead and repeat that. <clears throat> okay. So depth is the lowest point of your pattern. It's not uh, anything other than that. It's, it's the low point, the floor of your pattern. <clears throat> so, in these particular patterns here, these leaves, because they are puffed, they are raised up from that floor level. So I had set that to be 0.5, a half an inch, and then I puffed it up from there. And then, so the height is the adjustment of how high up 
it goes within whatever that set depth is. Right? Does that make sense? Point three is from the table <clears throat> to the top of the wood. Point three is is referencing down. So everything's always going to reference the surface of the board down. The only time that you are not referencing the surface of the board is when you're using the Pierce function, which I'll show you the Pierce function in a little bit later here. Yep, go ahead. Um, this is like a little bit of a glance from where you are right now, but you've got the eight, eight petals, and if you had a flower that you were drawing, and you had another layer of petals behind it, well, I'll, I'll show you exactly th that here in a minute because we're, we're going to put another layer behind there. Yeah. You can go all the way up to 999. <clears throat> it's it's a, a percentage is a, is a way to look at it. it it's not exactly it's it's a, a weighted thing but yeah uh, that the uh, a percentage works in as, as far as understanding it so each pattern comes in at a hundred a height of hundred so we, we, we call that hundred percent and so anything above or below that above is going to make that it's going to exaggerate the height beyond what its normal value is and then anything below that below 100 is going to shallow it so 100 is kind of the normal zone for it but when you're modeling things there is no normal until you've fused it in and made your pattern so we're just adjusting depths and heights here pushing and pulling in every direction we can just to make things look right so I feel pretty good about uh, those leaves for now. Uh, my dome here just doesn't feel tall enough in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and draw another circle. Right here, center it. And I'm going to do a bubble puff. And I'm going to do like a depth of 0.2 or something here. See if I can't bring the middle that's up a little bit. Yeah, that's starting to get a little bit better. But this is key the way I'm rotating around and looking at everything and zooming in gotta gotta do that and you guys know how I'm rotating like that show us a lot of a lot of people don't know this but you know most most people you have a mouse with your computer and it, it's a three button mouse <clears throat> unless you've got maybe a Mac that that doesn't but even on a Mac you can you can do the same kind of thing the middle button here that's a wheel zooms me in and out and then when I push down on that same button push down on that wheel and just hold it down it allows me to rotate this screen so I, I there's a lot of people who don't know this uh, but it it makes navigating your screen really really easy when you just got one finger that can zoom in and out and rotate you all around You can do it the same way on a Mac. Depends on how your Mac mouse is configured. Uh, some of the pro mouses, they have buttons on the side that you need to press in. and So it's uh, it can be done in, in different ways depending on your Mac and, and your mouse setup. How about a laptop? A laptop? Well, depending on what your... Yeah, it depends on on the trackpad too. They they vary so much these days, but obviously you know Zoom is going to be a Zoom, and uh, I I don't know how you rotate that way. Use a rotate tool on your uh, toolbar there. Uh, here we 
the bubble in the middle was based on the contour that you drew. Uh huh. And now you put another bubble on top of it. Yeah. Alter the contour, or is that just a? No, it's just another element. I'm just piling things on top of other things. <clears throat> but we're gonna we're gonna keep tweaking the the heights here because I'm I've got these you know little pieces of the the petals there intersecting my dome so maybe we'll increase that dome pull it up to 999 as big as we can and then my leaf elements here They push their height down to 30. <clears throat> All right, so I just took the petals and I reduced, I changed their depth to 0.35 and then uh, reduce the height to 30 now I think we're we're there as far as those those pedals are concerned okay so let's go to what uh, gentleman back here asked me about let's add another layer of pedals to this and I'm going to do this pretty simply I'm just going to use circles for it. Could, could you have copied all the leaves and laid them back out in a little you know, different color depth? Absolutely. No. I could, I could take all these leaves and put them in a group here and make just those, those leaf or petal elements just a pattern. And throw it underneath? I could put it on there and then rotate the whole thing. Uh, so we could do the we could do the flower that way. Would you guys rather me do it that way? Oh, I would just add. <laughs> well, we can do it that way. It's a it's a good way to do it. Uh, the other way I was going to do it, I was just going to draw circles here, and and I'll, so I'll make one of these, and then I'll do it the other way. No, that's that's good. So I can do a curve puff here just on the, a circle element. And set it to a depth of 0.35, I think is where we set those pedals. And it's kind of sticking out on top. But let's reduce that height down to Oh, let's say 20, maybe 30 we can go. Looks like we can push it even higher, 40. All right, so now it's starting to intersect into my, my pedal there. So I can push that back down to 30. So just by pushing and pulling those depths and heights there again, I can hide things and nest things behind other things. So I can have a whole nother layer of, of little round petals behind this, this flower. But let's go ahead and let's take our petals that we laid out here, which I put in a group, and let's make it into a pattern. Yes. Okay, now that should be in our library. There's our flower. Let's go put it here. Center it. And let's rotate it. 22 point what? It's not allowing me to put decimals in there for some reason. It's very strange. 
<laughs> All right, so we'll call it good enough with 22. We're making art here, not not science, so. <laughs> All right. Well, it it looks like a mess right now. We're going we're going to fix that. So just the same way that we did with that little circle that I had created. Uh, we're going to push this back behind. So the other pedals we got were set at a depth of 0.35, right? And then we need to push the height down. We need to push that height so it's not interfering with our other elements. And we have this, this merge down here too from our, our revolve, right? And so let's go ahead and move this into our leaf folder so that it, it can become part of that merge because that's what we talked about where things are isolated. So outside of that merge, it was flat. Uh, it didn't have any of that curve to it. And then when I move it inside there, then you can see how it popped in and adopted those curves. <clears throat> and that's that's kind of interesting right there. And yeah, and this is also the fun thing that happens with when you start modeling patterns like this. And we haven't done anything complicated yet. We haven't needed any art degree or any special talents. All I've done, I created one element or two elements and we're just playing around with it and coming up with things. So this is how patterns come about most of the time. So we could we could just stick with that. Um, let me push it around. Okay, so there I was able to push it back behind those other pedals that I created. And I, I did that just by changing the depth and the height, just pushing and pulling on those different things and you can create any kind of layering effect that you want. Um, okay, let's add one more element to this and we'll call this pattern pretty good. Let's draw another circle. Let me go ahead and center that. And this time we want to kind of add a, uh, a ridge around the side or a, a bump to kind of enclose this, uh, this rosette that we've done. And we could have done something like that in the revolve, right? Just like we kind of put the dome in the middle. I could have bumped out the end and, and created an element there. But it's cleaner and easier to do that kind of thing with uh, a sweep. A sweep is another part of the 3D tool set here. And sweeps allow you to draw a profile in our profile window. So you can see here on this screen, we've got a green and we've got the white of the actual circle that we drew. And then there's this red in the middle. Down here, you'll see a green, a white, and a red. And so these are looking at this from a, the side point of view. And these are kind of the boundary elements. Now we just want to put a quick arc on that white line. So we're not too concerned about those greens and, and red lines. So we're just going to draw an arc and we want it kind of more on the outside of this white line rather than on the inside because we don't want it to interfere with our petals. So we know the green here is on the outside so we can move this to the outside there.
and let's attach it to the top here at we'll just set it at a quarter inch deep and we'll see how that looks okay gives a nice little ridge around there I'm, I don't think it's big enough though. let's make it bigger so we just double click on it there and it opens up that profile window again and then I can make adjustments hit OK and there we go No, the texture's not on. It was. It was. <laughs> Last time you went in there, it was crazy. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't have any answer for that. Mass hallucination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, here we go. That's a, a nice little rosette. We can still go in and tweak some things like if we're concerned about these little gaps in here then we could go in and, and create some region areas I like those gaps myself so it, it adds more detail in, into the carve so um, now we've got that created does everybody feel confident that they could do this kind of thing does everybody want to make our own patterns yeah. no? <clears throat> Uh -huh. Can you keep in mind uh, maybe chip out or things you have to be aware of when the machine's carving so you don't get them too close to maybe that you just say, oh, the machine won't cut through this? Yeah, I always think about uh, chip out and, and how the machine's going to carve. I don't necessarily think about chip out because if you're, if you're doing things right, chip out doesn't exist. Okay. But, uh, <clears throat> and I, I'll... I can I can help you eliminate that as even a possibility, but uh, yeah, I'm always thinking about that. But I'm also designing this pattern much bigger than than it's actually going to end up being carved too, and so the uh, the elements there are going to end up um, kind of differently when they get down to, to the scale. So these gaps here that seem really kind of big at this point and deep. When I've got this fused into a pattern and much smaller with uh, a combination of using draft tools and my bit optimization tools and things like that, like these, these things will be gone. They'll, they won't be an issue at all. So we'll, we're going to, and we're going to look at that here in a little bit when we start laying out some of these pieces for the trunk. Yep. Can you use draft and centering in that? <clears throat> no. No, I haven't used any draft or feathering in this at all. Can you? you can absolutely, but the the thing is, is that when we go to make this into a pattern, the it's not going to remember any of any of those settings. <clears throat> so those those settings, drafting, feathering, bit optimization, those are optimization settings to help your carvings. Uh, come out smoother and better so actually so yeah after we make this into a pattern once we put it on then we could apply those those type of effects yeah that's good question uh, okay so we've got this design what do we do with it now who can tell me group it yeah group it and save it yeah absolutely okay so we've got these little subgroups that we created with different elements, and then we've got a couple circles outside of this. Uh, so what we want to do is is grab all those. So I can grab this group and with my control button, grab the other two circles and then hit. Did you do a control A? No. <clears throat> and the reason you don't want to select all is that uh, so let me let me illustrate here so if I grab this which is in this sub or this folder and then I've got all these pedal elements in this subfolder right if I select all those 
it's not just selecting that and I hit group here it's going to pull it out of that group and put it in a, in a new group and so I, by if you want to maintain all of your directories there and your, your subgroups the way that you had them you need to just select the parent folder and then use the control to individually select the other elements that you want to get them all added in and maintain your your groupings. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we've got uh, an overall group there and I didn't put the rectangle in because that was just our floor for the pattern. So that's not included. I'll take just that group of all that pattern and we'll go and make pattern. And we'll call it flower rosette. And all these patterns are in the uh, pattern set, the conference collection you guys got. I, I had people asking me, they're like, oh man, you guys, there's some really good patterns. And I was like, well, I'm going to show you guys all how to make them tomorrow. So they might not seem as valuable after I show you how easy it is to do it. <coughs> Question. Uh, I might be getting in here, but if you want to do that same pattern without your circle around just highlight the leaves. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Absolutely, you can uh, do any combination of anything you want out of this. Adjust it and make a whole series of of uh, flower rosettes based on just these few elements that we, we just created. You can have a whole collection of of rosettes just by playing around and, and making different configurations of it. <clears throat> so once you save this whole thing as a pattern, to go back to his question, you could, you know, you shut down design and you bring it back open, you, know, you bring this pattern back in, you can go in and create another pattern off of this one? Or do you have sure. So, yeah. So I'm going to save this now. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, I'm going to save this and I'm going to um, create a folder that's just going to be called pattern modeling or something so I know that these are just my pattern files that I'm creating uh, not and it's an MPC so it's just like my other project files but this isn't something I'm gonna go upload and carve this is just on my working files so that I've got my pattern I can go in and adjust any of those things and then make it as a new pattern again so yeah you can you can do all that